Thomas Martin, I'm the Perspective with Median Investments at the University of Oxford. I want to talk about outreach with research programmes. So a lot of our outreach at the moment is with big cultural institutions, the Bodleian Library, the National Library of Wales, and we look at how to transfer a big chunk of their content, their digital images, over into Commons. But I'm interested in the, increasingly, the uh, sort of little projects, little funded projects to create research stuff or educational stuff. And I, working in the university, I hear a lot about these, and they often overlap with things we're doing with media. I hear about projects, and then, well, aren't we doing that in the media? Pretty much exactly the same thing. So some people I spoke to in Oxford said they're working on creating an interactive timeline of the battles of World War I. And we've got Histropedia. So we've seen that, but it's driven by, timelines are driven by Wikidata and Wikipedia. And so I sat down this person's computer and literally in a few seconds created the interactive timeline of the battles of World War I. <laughs> and then uh, George dropped his book. What are we doing? Why are we spending money on this project when it's this easy? Another project, I, I've heard about this, some of it's being funded. Take a historic street, Broad Street in Oxford, take photographs of it now in each building, uh, and but find historic photos, lithographs, uh, works of art depicting these buildings. So tag them all, have this in the database, and be able to navigate through the street in detail, geographically and through time. And we sort of got that. We've got a category on Commons already, which is Broad Street, Oxford. It has in it photographs taken by people today with cameras, works of art, life events, historical material relating to those buildings. Often that's with a date, hopefully that's with geographic, or geographic information like the longitude and latitude. So, uh, Oh, uh, there were projects funded to transcribe all the publications or the notes of the historic author. And we've got that, a Wikisource author profile is that, is people working on that exact problem. Uh, so we've got, um, oh, and the, my favourite example was brought to my attention by Richard Devil in the Wikimedia UK office. So there are about 4,000, there's more than 4,000 hill forts in the British Isles. These are these lumpy bits at the top of hills that were prehistoric forts. So, uh, not very technical. <laughs> lumpy, but it's lumpy, but, um, so, and this is a funded project involving a team of academics to do a definitive database, atlas, and public search publication about all of these hill forts, 4,000 odd. Uh, and uh, Richard was able to create, with the Wikidata query service, which generates a map, a map of hill forts. Uh, Wikipedia knows about hundreds, not thousands yet, uh, and we can show that, that, that you can make an atlas of hill forts in a few seconds. Um, that, it was small content to what they had, but that shows there's a platform for this information. And I met up with the professor leading this team and, and he agreed to upload, when he's got these 4,000 records, upload some of the data of each field force to Wikidata and open source the, uh, the text descriptions of the field to make Wikipedia articles out of. Uh, these records in Wikidata will have links back to this atlas, so they get 4,000 incoming links, very excited about that. We get 4,000 new records and wiki data which are based on academic reviewed, uh, solely reliable stuff, which is good. So we offer potentially three things. We offer existing <coughs> content, uh, photographs, art, and so on, data, or we have a platform for content which doesn't exist, or we haven't got much yet about hill forts, but we could have, and we're the ideal place to put it, or new kinds of research output. So I worked with the Voltaire Foundation in Oxford. Their research output is books, print books. They're not like one of the funky data visualization projects, but I showed them how to put the publication date for a Voltaire work into Wikidata. And if they can do that, they get a lot of articles, a lot of publication data. Then we have timeline tools, we can have other ways to, to create educational tools around this stuff. Uh, so now they're, they're going to do this, they seem to sort have of some data visualization projects, which they cool in the 21st century in their one of those being active funders. Um, so the, these research projects, when you bid for them, you, you've now got to put in pathways to impact. You've got to prove to the research council who are going to fund it that it will shape public knowledge and public debate about this topic. And we are the best way to do that. We can say you've got to do Wikipedia, Wikidata, these are the highest traffic sites on that topic. It's really to your topic. Uh, so this is a great opportunity for us. They're starting to realise that people bidding for these projects, that they need Wikipedia expertise at the point at which they bid for these projects. And maybe they need to employ Wikipedia to help write the bid to the funders, say what's going to happen. And that's a, a sort of step up from Wikipedia coming in and running an event or, or what we've been doing before. There's a couple of barriers. One is that the academics and librarians that we're talking about 
already think they know what Wikipedia is. Maybe they're not familiar with thinking of it in this way. And, and the other is it's just so overwhelming, the scale of what we're doing. I had a, an academic at the workshop I was given <coughs> recently saying, yeah, it's just staggering. It's not the, the pace of the workshop, but just the scale of what we're doing. It's more than 19 million data items on Wikidata. It's more than 30 million uh, files on commons. It's more than 340,000 English texts on Wikisource. And this is just far above the scale of any of these academic projects people are working on. Right? That 4,000 bits of data is, is a big project. And people need to absorb this. So I suggest we, we frame our communication to approach from a different way. I say start small. So tell people, and don't do it in front of Wikipedia because they, they, they have this bad experience, but tell people there is a project to share um, information, reliable knowledge about <coughs> mental health with everybody in the world. It's going to be freely available on the internet, on mobile devices and so on, and multilingual and but check and so on. And people go, that's good, that's not a good project. If the hat's been passed around for that, I'll help, I'll put money in And so oh, there's all another project is about endangered bird species. And we're going to, we're going to show photos, descriptions of where they are, descriptions of what they have live, and we'll be able to make image galleries in Welsh and we'll be able to see these on a map. And so oh, that's a good project. Oh, what are people doing that's good. And and my music apology and and people from the DC and so on. There's all these projects going on because we're doing the sum of all knowledge that so includes all those things. So this is a great opportunity for us. This is what I'm seeking to do in my work, my career now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, But the internet as a whole doesn't have an internet existence. It's lots of universities and ISPs and so on that link to each other. So you put into some, something into a project, but that project depends on infrastructure for other things which already exist, like Wikipedia, Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons, and so on. So that's how I frame it. Like you're paying for project and the infrastructure for the project. Well, the trust you be asking for money as well. I, I, well, I'm sure I'm saying this is a way to ask for money and help and everything yeah. else. <laughs> I sometimes find this though that the kind of Wikipedia comes on, you know, it's, it's uh, lots of friendly smiles and things are going to be really easy in Wikipedia as a platform, and then you get involved and then it's all copyright. You, you're straight into kind of debates about rights and, and ownership, and then it's the, the kind of edit wars and, and that and the slightly snarling inside it. That's yeah. the thing that we do. And it's it's kind of being open to the fact that there is actually a commitment that's being made in terms of the principles of, of engagement. It's not just yeah. the outcomes. But that, uh, in the particular role I am, that's an opportunity for me. In that, yeah, this stuff doesn't happen magically. People need training and, and expert advice. It's tailored tail to what they do with librarians uh, or academics or teachers or whatever. Uh, so they need that advice, and that is legal, technical, kind of usability advice, like where does the button actually upload the <laughs> images. Uh, so the, ideally, it would it be completely frictionless, but there is a role for people like me. This is kind of my case of being employed by the University of Oxford. But, um, 
and it, it's responded to that they do see that they have got so many endorsements to my project because they see that they need this. But it's a small amount, it's the shavings at the end of the funding stream to get them the consultancy that to, to help them have this project, say how to uh, improve an article on Wikipedia in a way that won't be reverted by somebody. Well, that's doable. You just got to explain cultural and different examples. And, uh, yeah, it's all doable. But, yeah, but I'm essential to the process. I'm essential. Absolutely. Me, me. <laughs> <laughs>